Sure, I'll hand sure. it back to you at 12.01. Sure, no problem. Great. Datuk, Datuk, I think, uh, Datuk Captain, I think you need to uh, switch off your mic code, Datuk, because hmm, your mic has a problem. Oh, really? It's, yeah, it's echoing. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. okay. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am going to mute my mic as well, Dr. Mm. Sunny. We are live right now, so there will be echoes because it's streaming on mm. Facebook as well. So I'm going, uh, turning my mic off. Okay. We've already broadcasted. We have 63 participants coming already in the room mm. and building up. Mm. Mm. Okay. Okay, my, my time check is already 11.01. Um, maybe we should start get going with the with the sessions because uh, our time is uh, very limited and we have to stop at 11.57 to give way uh, to Captain uh, Surah yeah, uh, for the special event at Port Klang, happening at Port Klang. Yeah, that we will go live to Port Klang later at 12. Yeah, uh, so maybe, can, can I start now, panelists? Yes. yes. Okay, great. Okay. All right. Uh, so, uh, for those of you who are joining us this morning, welcome. Uh, this is our uh, first of a series of webinars that we have planned. Uh, and this webinar uh, is very special uh, because it is um, done uh, at a time when we are at a crisis. Um, for everybody, not just uh, the population but also for businesses just before i start uh, i would like to uh, you know, uh, highlight some of uh, uh, no, you know, rules of, you know, of our webinar uh, due to in order to ensure that we have we don't have any technical difficulties during the webinar uh, when we are live uh, we have to unfortunately uh, mute all mics and videos feed for all our attendees except for moderators uh, and panelists. Um, also, um, we have also turned off uh, the chat function. Um, if you have any questions for the panelists, you can post them uh, in the Q&A uh, well, uh, uh, module. I think you can see that there is a Q&A icon uh, on your screen. You can use that to post any questions. And if we have time, we will uh, try to answer um, you know, uh, as much as possible uh, of your questions and questions can be posted in English or BM uh, but I would like to advise that um, we stick to English because we have participants coming in attendees coming in from overseas we have people from Nigeria we have people from Indonesia uh, as well um, and uh, we want to make sure that they can uh, also share uh, uh, the questions that you posted all right so with that, uh, mm -hmm. I would like to welcome you uh, to our uh, first webinar. This webinar is uh, co-hosted by uh, CILT Malaysia, Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport Malaysia, and CLLB Sendirian Berhad, which is one of our premier training provider uh, approved by CILT. Uh, and the topic that we have for today uh, is something that is very close to us uh, in the industry which is challenges and opportunities uh, within our industry in logistics, supply chain and transportation. All right. To set the stage, uh, I just want to share um, some, uh, you know, uh, uh, the, the timeline that we have uh, within this COVID-19 situation. Uh, the, the first case was reported in China, in Wuhan, back in December 2019. Uh, and then, uh, no, a lot of uh, events happen in between. Uh, now people start taking heed of the alarm sounded in China. People start to practice uh, enhanced hygienic, hygiene practices uh, and then the nation as well uh, start to enforce some travel control. Yeah? Uh, and in fact, we, we first introduced our travel ban in February 24th. And all this uh, culminated on 11, 11 March 2020 when WHO declared um, that the whole world is in a pan pandemic uh, situation yeah? and less than uh, a week from that declaration by WHO 
uh, our Prime Minister uh, announced that uh, we were going to, uh, uh, the nation is going to be in MCO. Uh, and that starts uh, on uh, 18 March for two weeks. Yeah? And then we, as expected, uh, uh, the MCO was extended okay, uh, for another two weeks. And you now from that time, uh, um, the Prime Minister started to coin this term a new norm. Yeah? Uh, so when people start to adjust their lifestyle, yeah? uh, you know, people start to ask questions, how do I, re how do I uh, retain the same quality of life that I have you know, I had <coughs> before the MCO? But I think for businesses, you know, we, cannot, uh, you know, we cannot be in new norm because a new norm is not good for us. Yeah? Instead, uh, businesses should uh, you know, come up with new model not new norm, a new model uh, to ensure su survivability of the businesses. And businesses should start to understand uh, what um, the new norm is, what uh, is um, the, uh, you know, uh, the environment is for businesses and identify <coughs> how they can fill the gap uh, between uh, the new model and the new norm. Yeah? Uh, and then uh, I think these uh, different dates um, have put us uh, into different phases. Okay, the first one uh, is when we try to predict what is going to happen. Now, what if you know, we have a lot of these questions uh, and then uh, a good uh, company, a good business uh, will you know, try to uh, create potential scenarios, uh, possible scenarios on how to bring the business if uh, you know, the uh, recent movements uh, come into practice. And then uh, during the first MCO, uh, the, the businesses should be able to validate uh, their new practices and, and to, uh, to make adjustment whenever possible to ensure that they can continue providing services uh, to the population. And uh, with the new norm, we should have the new model for businesses and to continue implement that. This looks good uh, on the screen, yeah, on paper, but uh, in real life, it is more difficult than this. And, and I'm not going to give a lecture on this even though I miss giving lecture, uh, I'm an academician by practice. <laughs> but this is not about me. This is not uh, about CLT. This is not about uh, any single one of us. This is about our industries. And we are very fortunate uh, to have three prominent distinguished speakers joining us um, this morning, uh, representing a different uh, segment of the industry. We are in the same industry, so we have different segments. The first one uh, from the port sectors, we have Captain K. Subramaniam, uh, who is uh, currently the general manager of Port Clang Authority. He is also the vice president of International Association of Ports and Harbor um, for the Asia, Southeast and uh, Oceania uh, region. And he holds a master mariner uh, certificate for ongoing. The second speaker will be representing uh, the LSPs, the logistics service uh, providers. Uh, we have on this with us this morning, Mr. Alvin Chia, who is also our chartered member. Uh, Mr. Alvin Chua, Mr. sorry, Mr. Alvin Chua is currently the MD of Estrats uh, Estrats Group of Companies. He is also currently the president of Federation of Malaysian Freight Forwarders since 2011. No coming to almost 10 years already. Yeah? Uh, and then he is also the vice chairman of ASEAN Federation of Forwarders Association, AFA, and um, you know, a member of the National Logistic Task Force. And our third speaker, definitely not the least, is uh, Dato, uh, Dr. Andy, uh, who will be representing the shippers and manufacturing sectors. Uh, Dato, Andy, uh, Dato Dr. Andy is, uh, is currently the chairman of uh, Malaysian National Shippers at Council. He is also currently the vice president of Federation of Malaysian Manufacturers, FMM, chairman of FMM uh, Logistics Committee, and uh, proudly also the co-chair of Pemuda. Okay. With that, uh, I have uh, set the stage, I've introduced the speakers. Before I, 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 uh, no, I give the stage to the speaker, uh, here are some guiding questions uh, to the panelists, the speaker, uh, to when they share their experiences. Um, you, know, uh, you might want to highlight uh, whether you know, your agency, your business, uh, your industry, your segment foresees such a crisis. Um, 
If you do, have you made any adjustment? Do you adopt any strategies? Uh, do you have any specific models uh, to bring your industries or your seg segment forward? And how you, what is the outlook for the industry that you present? You present, especially you know, if the business and the economy is reopened uh, post M MCO. And with that, uh, I would like to introduce uh, our uh, first speaker. Yeah, uh, I'm going to stop sharing uh, this slide. Okay, I'm going to pass over to uh, that to, uh, to Captain K Suramaniam. And before I I uh, pass the mic to that to uh, Captain K Suramaniam, uh, I would like to welcome uh, our international president CLT, that to Abdul Razak Malik, who had, uh, who um, is uh, no, had, uh, graceful enough uh, to spend his uh, time with us, and also we have Tuan Haji Ramli, uh, our uh, Malaysian uh, President of the Chartered Institute of Logistics and Transport, and we have also with us uh, Dato Captain uh, Abdul uh, Rahim. Yeah. Um, with that, um, Captain, are you ready? Yes, uh, Zli. Yes, yes, uh, Captain. Now I, I pass you uh, yeah. the mic, and and uh, we we. No, we will hear from you how uh, you address the issues. Thank, thank you. you. Good day, everyone. Um, and uh, uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, let me first congratulate the Chartered Institute of Transport and Logistics Malaysia, uh, Haji Ramli, uh, uh, for your excellent uh, coordination to organize this webinar. I think uh, uh, on an auspicious day like this, on a workers' day, uh, this is a, a F forum for us to share our thoughts and how we are going to go forward with this crisis. All right, uh, well, the first, first uh, question that Azli put forward was, did we foresee this crisis? Uh, I think to the, to the best of our knowledge and experience, uh, we did not. I must admit, I did not uh, it, uh, foresee such a crisis at such a huge scale, which spans around the globe. Uh, we have had crisis before. Uh, we had the medical crisis of SARS way, way back in 2003. Uh, that was a predecessor of the coronavirus. Uh, of course, we have had some issues here locally. Uh, we had some environmental issues such as haze. Uh, there were times where we actually went up to uh, very hazardous levels and had to close uh, the port for several hours and even restrict navigation, but definitely not uh, foreseeing the crisis to this extent. But having said that, uh, from the experiences we learned previously, one of the first things uh, that we have uh, adopted is uh, to conform our plans towards the national needs. Uh, the national uh, level we have a national contingency plan to address crisis, uh, crisis. And this is where we have uh, tailor-made our contingency plans to meet national requirements. So we have guidelines from the National Security Council uh, on, on uh, mainly on uh, crisis involving uh, uh, this uh, natural disasters. But on a health scale, uh, I think we can actually tailor make something, uh, we did actually tailor make something to this uh, particular crisis. But right now, uh, we do have a, a business continuity plan that has been working for us over the last few years. And we have actually put that into a maximum effect right now. And to a certain extent, it is helping us uh, to overcome some of the issues that we are facing. Uh, the main issue that we have today here in the port sector is actually keeping the port open, serving the industries and serving the needs of our people. Uh, I think on that basis, the ports have been declared as a essential service and therefore we are still operational round the clock 24 seven. We have ships coming in without any interruption a little bit of delays uh, occasionally due to due to additional uh, strict security uh, sorry uh, health checks but other than that the port has been functioning uh, without any interruption so on that note uh, i think the port was well prepared to meet such crises uh, but then we have to adjust to the requirements of the authorities now 
the authorities have, have clamped down on the uh, number of staff that, that could be working in the industry. Initially, there was a requirement for only 50% of the staff to be operational. And that's when we, have to, we had to uh, readjust our, our operational uh, uh, working sequences. Uh, but both our terminals, Northport and Westport, adapted very well. And they actually uh, managed to uh, move their staff around, the operational staff around, uh, to ensure that all key areas are well equipped and well manned. Uh, of course, admin and, and uh, other office uh, staff were allowed to work for, from home. And I think with the uh, good digital connectivity we have today, uh, they were able to carry out the task with minimal uh, issues. Uh, going forward, I think uh, we don't, don't really foresee uh, much problem, but a lot of industries have been affected. Uh, we think that uh, it'll take some time for uh, especially manufacturing uh, services to come back online. Uh, remember, the ports are a service sector. We move goods and the goods have to be uh, manufactured and have to be consumed elsewhere. So if these processes don't take place, then I think the ports will not have much of a volume. So uh, we are looking forward to the government easing some of the restrictions uh, in the days to come, which is already happening over the last one week. Uh, I think there's a lot of thought now given to the economic uh, situation of the country, uh, but that has to be done in a very careful and balanced manner so that we do not actually overdo things and, and set back all, all the efforts that our health, uh, health authorities have achieved so far. So uh, for the moment, I just like to summarize that the ports are serving the needs of the nation. We are operating uh, as per normal. Uh, the volume of cargo seems to be slightly dropping. Our local cargo import and export is doing quite well. Uh, we have not seen a, a significant drop from the first quarter, January to March. Uh, but what we see uh, is rapidly declining is the transshipment volumes. Uh, this, I believe, is due to the uh, reduction in the consumption in our neighboring countries. Uh, we also serve the Chinese uh, markets, uh, a lot of imports and exports to China. Oh. I believe China was also on a shutdown mode in uh, February and probably in March. And as they come back online, uh, we hope to see the transshipment cargo picking up as well. Dali? Thank Thank you, Captain, uh, for uh, no, enlightening us on um, the going on uh, at the port, uh, especially in, uh, in Port Klang. Uh, it's, it's very uh, good to hear that uh, the, the port is not uh, affected uh, a lot uh, in terms of all operations, uh, even though uh, the volume might uh, no, might decline, uh, has declined. But uh, maybe uh, did you foresee that after MCO, the, there will be, um, you know, a sudden search of uh, volume? Well, I, the well, first challenge is, of course, we have, a, a, I wouldn't say a major backlog. We still have a fair amount of containers and cargo still yet to be cleared from the port. Uh, this is due to, as I said earlier, due to manufacturing industry only now coming back online after mm. six weeks of, of uh, dormancy. So mm. as they come back online, I think the need is for them to uh, have the raw materials quickly uh, delivered to their factories and premises. So we foresee as the government opens up and eases the restrictions, there will be more demand for cargos to leave the port. So mm. what we have done is we, have, we are working with all the, uh, the logistics uh, players, especially mm. uh, the hauliers, the forwarding agents association, the shipping associations uh, to come up with a properly planned uh, exit strategy so that we do not block or we do not uh, overload the delivery process at the port where we start uh, congesting the gates and so on. Mm -hmm. So we have that working now. Uh, so we, we think that uh, it will not be much different from what's going on right now. Mm -hmm probably we'll see an increase of about 30% of the haulier traffic now coming into the port and leaving to take okay. those 
cargoes that have not been cleared so far. Okay. Thank you, Captain Subra. I think uh, that is just a good uh, end point uh, from Captain Subra because that uh, when Captain Subra touched about forwarders uh, no, uh, and, and, and providers, I think we uh, can now pass uh, and go to uh, Mr. Alvin uh, to share what is his take uh, experiences uh, from the perspective of logistics service uh, provider. Uh, Mr. Alvin, are you ready? Yeah, thank you. Okay, yes, I pass it over to you. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. Good morning all. Um, good morning to, to all the panelists. Uh, thank you, Dr. Zali at the Sociality for organizing this uh, important uh, webinar, right? Um, as you are, firstly, I would like to thank um, Captain Subra, you know, for his effort that he have done, you know, setting up the the logistic uh, and uh, this uh, transportation group, uh, the uh, the fraternities in Pokhlang. We have a very regular meeting together, uh, and uh, we plan out, you know, all the movement, even for the re release of uh, the non-essential goods. That, that's a very good move that we have done. That's why uh, we were able to keep down the numbers. Uh, of uh, capacity in the port. That is very important for us, you see. Um, as you are aware, our logistic uh, service providers in Malaysia, 90% of them are SME, right? Mm -hmm. So when this crisis happened, it caught everybody by surprise. And with this uh, MCO, you know, the, and the requirement by the NSC on, on the SOP, a lot of company uh, could not operate properly, right? Uh, so, uh, you know, there were so many uh, discussion about how to go about it to get the approval. Firstly, we get the approval from MOT, but we couldn't move the goods because um, the customers, uh, the importer export, mm -hmm. exporter must get the approval from MOT. So there is a lot of um, breakdown on uh, communication between the ministries. So these are the challenges that we, we face, right? So uh, even the interstate, you know, some of them, they, they, we need police uh, this uh, permits to, to move, you know, instead of, uh, you know, even with the MOT letter, it was not allowed. So it's a big challenge here and everybody is learning. And also, if you look at uh, our SME uh, service providers, you know, they, are, they are not into uh, e-logistics yet, you know. Uh, mm. Two years ago, I tried to embark on uh, this uh, digital transformation mm. for the logistics industry, but there was no takers. MDAC, and the government have come up with a, mm. a, a grant, you know, a, a matching grant for this company, even for, not for the SME, for the medium mm. size and also for the large company. There was mm. no takers. I was very mm. surprised why they do not want to digitize their, 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 their mm. company. So now mm. they felt it, you see. They, they couldn't go to, to, to work, you know. So for us, you know, all our digital uh, connection, uh, connectivities are all silos, right? And all our, or are not uh, cloud-based. Most of them are not cloud-based. So everybody has to go back to office just to do the custom declaration, the clearance, you know, and everything. So this is the lesson learned uh, from, from this crisis uh, that all SMB companies should move into uh, digital transformation. I have already discussed with um, MDAC, you know, we have a meeting with the CEO of MDAC, you know, how to do that you know, for the industry. And uh, the feedback is very good now that everybody now is looking into uh, uh, cloud-based uh, software, right? You customs, example like you custom, it was a good move by the government in 2013 to move the SMK system into you custom, which actually is a web-based or cloud-based, right? But unfortunately, up to today, after seven years, we only are doing a very small part of the you customs, right? The, initi the initiative was very good, right? You custom web base, you can do anywhere. That's why the U is there, you know, you know, can do anywhere. But it was not so. So in the end, they have to bring in, uh, actually their first objective is to bring, to, to make it the web and then get, uh, 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 get um, make it free for all users, right? To use the, the, the software, but it's not. So in the end, they had to bring in the, the service provider again, you know. So, and then, but again, you can see now, we are just starting uh, in, in, the snow pit, uh, in the snail pace you know, for this uh, new custom, which is not helping the industry at all. So most of the com company now are using two systems, new customs. Uh, they insist that you use new custom for certain 
uh, criteria. You know, the rest you still have to use the SNK. So this again also do not help the industry, right? So we we don't have many. Uh, we only have one web based uh, this uh, SNK system at the moment, which is done very very uh, very small. There's this platform. So I'm actually uh, looking into a discussion with uh, companies uh, who can come up with a platform for the whole industry. Everything on web on cloud, you know. Uh, connecting their, their, their interfacing their, their, free, their front end free, free forwarding software together with uh, custom software and also with the accounting. These are my objectives. So, the new model that we should have, we should look seriously now, is actually cloud based uh, software for the industry. That's very, very important. If not, we will be left behind. How are we going to, 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 to uh, operate you know, in the post MCO? Even post MCO, uh, there's a there's an issue here. The four, the the, the three, uh, this uh, uh, SOP required, you know, for company and you know, social distancing and all that. It's a big challenge here, actually. All right. So uh, we are always in discussion with both party, the port, co the port community, and also with Dr. Uh, Andy. There, you know, we have been discussing quite a lot under the National Council, which we are we are also a member there. I'm a vice president there also. So we get feedback from. Federation, uh, uh, FMM, you know, and MNSC, how are we going to move their cargo also? So these are on discussion and how are we going to do the digital transformation together with, uh, with the MNSC and F uh, FMM and also the port. So this is a big challenge here. So I hope all the logistics players should look into their own company you know, on, on digitization. Right, thank you. Yes, Ali. Okay. Uh, thank you, um, uh, Alvin. Um, I, I think that um, even though the whole entire crisis is very uh, unfortunate for all of us, I think it still represents uh, an opportunity uh, you know, for us to rethink, review, um, coming back to drawing table uh, to see how we should bring the entire industries, uh, industry forward uh, in a more a coherent manner, uh, you know, uh, as as an industry rather than uh, as uh, a piece on a piecemeal basis. Yeah. Um, yeah and, and 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 I think this crisis have shown us or have proven how disconnected we are uh, as players uh, in the industries, and that is uh, the need to to be connected um, is much more critical now. Uh, I, I think this is uh, you know, with, your, with your expertise, with your uh, role in the government, um, you know, advising the government. Uh, you know, this is something maybe uh, the government should uh, embark on uh, uh, and, and focus a lot uh, in terms of resources, in terms of uh, you know, infrastructure um, to provide uh, a, a seamless uh, connection, a seamless uh, connected infrastructure. Uh, Maybe we should only have one, you know, like Mr. Alvin mentioned just now. We have more than one, so people have to choose. You know? If you are in this uh, platform, you might not be able to talk to an, another party in a different platform. I think this is uh, this is counterproductive. Uh, I think, you know, uh, you know, with all our expertise, now we have all the same experience. Right? Everybody's feel the same. A pressure, uh, no, the needs is more uh, no, apparent now. Uh, no. I think um, um, when Mr. Alvin um, mentioned about um, uh, the manufacturer side, uh, uh, that is you no know, uh, the keywords that I'm waiting for because that is a cue for me to pass to Dr. Andy, uh, <laughs> <laughs> to Dr. Andy uh, because he comes from uh, you know, the manufacturers, the shipping side, you know? so the initiator of the entire process. Yeah? Uh, you know, what, what, uh, what happened? Uh, you know, uh, we will definitely love to hear uh, your perspective um, or your take uh, on the situation. Uh, Dato, yeah? Thank you very much uh, for inviting me, uh, uh, the organizer CLLB and CILT Malaysia. Thank you very much, Reshma. Uh, I represent uh, the manufacturers, which is at, at this moment, uh, some of the manufacturers are the essential service. Uh, you know, before this crisis, everybody 
uh, the big and small industry, uh, are, some of them are already enjoying good trades in Malaysia. Our export has gone up. Uh, trade facilitation in Malaysia has been very, uh, very smooth. You know, uh, most of the ports are enjoying good uh, business loading. And when this crisis came, like I say, you know, we do not see, we don't have a crisis, uh, which uh, I, I represent the Federation of Malaysian Manufacturer, one of the member of uh, the Malaysian National Shipper Council. We are the one that are uh, involved in imports and export. So uh, our members were quick to respond uh, when we were told that uh, there will be an MCO coming forward. Now, we could... We could already take the cue from uh, some of our exporters uh, to our country. Uh, you know, there were already international company that were able to feel this, and we were able to prepare and came out very quickly. The next day, when a meeting asked for a meeting on the 17th, I think, uh, we were able to quickly come up with the essential list. Uh, what was essential? A medical supply. Uh, uh, food, definitely, right, and a few other items. So those lists were immediately uh, reviewed by Miti and the team, and uh, and uh, they were immediately adopted as an essential list. Uh, certainly, we would like to move the items as well. It's no good that we can produce if we cannot uh, move the items. But what we were hoping is that in this crisis, uh, as you know, manufacturing sector, it's, uh, it's, it's one of the biggest sectors uh, that contributes to the economy. And, and Malaysia being an open economy, our supply chain itself, the whole global supply chain has been strained, as you can see, right? Uh, so what is most important is that the, both the global and the logistic supply chain must continue as for those essential suppliers. So our minister was also very quick to uh, respond the, the different ministry, METI, as, and, and also my focus at that time was also that uh, the MOT minister, he was very, very responsive. He called me and uh, asked what, what are the issues that um, the manufacturing sector would uh, require. I said to him, you know, movement of goods, whether essential or not essential, logistic is essential. Okay, you know, the police shouldn't stop, uh, you know, because we do not know what may be uh, essential, right, will affect the supply chain if, uh, the, if we have interruption. So it will make sense for those companies that under MCO1, MCO2, MCO3. Now, MCO1, most companies were trying to, uh, you know, work on how to apply to get their uh, manufacturing uh, or their company to be approved uh, as a supplier or, or uh, as an essential manufacturer. And most of our member company uh, eventually receive it. Of course, uh, some of them uh, get it after three days because METI says, you know, we will respond three days. Some of them may not get it. Some of them get rejected because some of them don't follow the criteria that are uh, expected in terms very important part of it is the human uh, the social distancing everybody wants to put 100 percent of their staff to work now at that time uh, they were some of them were rejected and they came back again for the application now having the mco1 mco2 uh, a lot of our manufacturer were able to uh, move some of the operation but there are some that are not allowed to operate like the steel mill those uh, they were given the permission to allow to go uh, to allow some of their staff to go back to what they call warm their machine right you know some of the furnaces cannot be shut down uh, some of the plants have facilities that cannot be shut down uh, have to have a continuous process you know can you imagine if you shut down certain furnaces right uh, the whole process uh, will, will be ruined so there are uh, the issues on uh, People understanding, trying to understand the Borang B, the, the Lamperam B, which is about the 50% employee. So finally, uh, companies begin to get it. Then the MCO3 kicks in. MCO1, MCO2, those who are on essential supply uh, were, were doing quite well. MCO3 kicks in, then there is a requirement for people 
who are not sure whether they should apply again since I have been approved as MCO uh, on during MCO 1 and MCO 2. But MCO 3, you will be required to have an approval letter with a QR code. And you are encouraged, it says you are encouraged to apply. So a lot of companies are also having a bit of confusion. What is this encouraged, right? Then the minister eventually came out with a statement saying that one, two, and three, you know, if you have got your approval on one and two, right, uh, you do not need to submit again. And uh, we are very glad now things have smoothened a bit to MCO4 now that uh, actually it is it is predicted that uh, it will still go on because uh, the statistics from Ministry of Health is very important, all right? It, it is the Ministry of Health statistics that will determine whether uh, the industry continue or not. Now, this disruption to the supply chain we would like to follow, it's uh, very important in the sense that during this period, some companies uh, were already producing their product and ready to export, but unfortunately, they couldn't move their goods. So what happened is that we have the port release one, which was on the 27th of March to 29. There was a little window of three days for, right, which the minister created, Minister of Transport, uh, and, and, and during the second day, uh, that evening on the 27th, uh, he wanted to go down to the, uh, to the port on the 28th morning, right? He contacted us that night before, but unfortunately there was some issue with the West Port. Uh, so we were then having a video conferencing to discuss, uh, you know, uh, how are we now in moving in, in, in this port release number one. Then subsequently, port release number two came in on the 4th of April to the 7th. Uh, he also took some advice that no, do, don't do that release over the weekend because first of all, some staff uh, may not want to come and work over the weekend. And we came to get the staff to work, it might be double pay, triple pay for some of them, right? Because it was a Saturday, Sunday. Yeah? Then subsequently, uh, uh, the port release number three, which was on the 13th of, uh, 13th to the 15th, and then subsequently the fourth release. So I think during this period, the 100% congestion at port release number one was beginning to ease. I had good feedback from uh, our little video conferencing at that time. Uh, Mr. Elvin was also able to produce uh, statistics that the freight forwarder were able to move. But there was this good uh, release anyway. But what happened is that you can release the goods, collect the goods, but some of the factories are not approved to open. So what can you do? So we, we can only advise our member, you know, you have to find ways to open the gate and let the lorry go in. Because logistic has we uh, proved to the minister that there is only one lorry driver. We don't have two or three people in the, in the cab. So these people are already social distanced by themselves. Second thing is that, uh, when they reach the factory gate, the factory gate is open for them and they can drive in and most of the time, uh, somebody will just unload. The lorry driver did not get involved at all. So, logistic must be allowed. We, we, we keep reiterating this. Logistic must be allowed. But then, what is so good having the port able to release if the other, other government agency like Customs, uh, uh, Custom uh, Veterinary Office, uh, you know, even serum and all that are not working. So it also defeats the purpose. So the related other government agency must also come on board. Now, Elvin also pointed out that there is this, we would like to go on paperless online process. Unfortunately, our U custom, which we have been telling the world, it was supposed to come out in 2016. It didn't come out 2017, 2018. So today we keep our mouth shut. Uh, we hope that it will come out one day. But we feel that that, that process is quite embarrassing. It, it is nothing more than handling paperwork, which other countries have already a system like this. All right, you know, why can't just Malaysia adopt and adapt some system, right, rather than make it? So I think it has to be something of a political will as well on there, right? So this moment, we feel that uh, the port release is good. We also had uh, Captain Subra issue a statement that says that during this few period, when you under the port release, uh, you will be waived on the demerit charges and all that. And that is a great help to the, the small and medium enterprise and also the other industry. 
So we and MNSC continuously look at how to, at this point of time, how to reduce the cost of business and not let all the charges from the port, from the terminal handling charges, depot gate charges, uh, all the land side charges that are available, sometimes we see in our shipping bill, right? Please hold on those charges. You know, don't increase. At the moment, I understand that we are against the depot gate charges, which we, we question ourselves. You know, first of all, the shippers have no contract with the depot gate operators. Why do we need to pay? This is a shipping line parking their containers in the parking lot, right? Which is not our, our issue. You know, you can park anywhere you like. But we also encourage at that time to the Minister of Transport, first of all, use the available on-dock port depot that we have in the ports. All right, that could reduce some of the cost. So I would like to say that during this period, we are very, very cautious on the cost of doing business because we feel that when this MCO period is lifted, some companies may not come on board. All right. And, and, and I will say that some companies may not even collect their containers or collect their goods from the port and you will end up with uh, more issues. So I think that it is good if you can release the goods to the, the manufacturers that are allowed to operate, let them operate. Uh, and also please, uh, waive some of the charges if possible. I will stop here for the moment. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Moder uh, Dr. Moderator. Thank you. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, Dato. Um, uh, may I ask you a question, um, Dato? You mentioned just now that um, the ministry, um, together with you and uh, some other uh, representative, had come up with the essential list on the 17th of March, which is just a day prior to the uh, enforcement of uh, MCO. Does that show that our country, our nation, our, our government agencies are not prepared for the MCO? Because you know, uh, to me, to me, we should have that list earlier, you know, uh, regardless of whether we have crisis or not. Um, I, I remember um, Dato Abdul Raza mentioned about humanitarian logistics when he was the president of CLT. This is something that we, we, need, we need to focus. Um, uh, no, that list is important regardless of whether uh, I know, it's very important in any type of crisis. And I think as a country, we should have that. Um, do you think that our country, our government is not really prepared for the crisis, Dato? Well, this crisis, uh, this virus, COVID-19, is until today, we have no uh, vaccine, right? You know, uh, there is no, we can only take certain procedures. Even those companies that are, that are allowed to operate under the essentialist must strictly adhere to the SOP. If you cannot meet the SOP, then don't operate because you are going to create more problem for uh, without uh, uh, for the industry, for the people, for the rakyat on the road. So I, I personally have have uh, been a secondary uh, what do you call uh, suspect, and I know the feeling of being confined 14 days, because you know the primary suspect that was in my meeting. All right, uh, so I had 14 days ahead of everybody else, and I know the feeling. Now I'm got extended, and it is a torture, you know. Uh, so. The government may be looking at it, and it is not easy to pull the plug on the economy. I will tell you, I'm sure the government at that time, you know, under uh, under the new uh, prime, prime minister, uh, we he also just came on board, and there were also many many other issues at the same time. So I would say that you know we are able to to prioritize the issue and the crisis, right? We're already good, yeah. But of course, certainly, if anything could have been done earlier. Uh, it, we also have to look into uh, when can we pull the plug, right? But uh, better late than never, I will say, right? You know, and, and the, the process that we are having two weeks, two weeks of measure is actually good. But uh, now that hopefully, I think by now, maybe President, uh, the Prime Minister could have announced something by now. Yep. And, uh, mm -hmm. that, could have, that could have moved a lot of other smaller industries that are already digitalizing their, pros, their business. Now, the lesson to be learned here is that for our supply chain, right, we need it to be seamless and to be digitalized seamlessly. 
Okay, those smaller companies that are not able to operate, even freight forwarding company, they still have to use a person to deliver the document by motorbike to the port or what? It shouldn't exist. Now, I'm also a co-chair in the trading across border with METI uh, director, senior director, Mr. Faisal, on, uh, <coughs> on this uh, World Bank indicator on doing business. World Bank has already recommended to us many, many years ago, all right, you know, to have this one window, you know, uh, what I call single window, all right? So people are able to get advice on shipping, track and trace their, their, their documents, track and trace their product, uh, sorry, their, 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 their container, uh, where are they, where they, uh, so these are issues that I think that we should allow the, uh, you know, the time that we have spent, the money that we have spent to develop this properly. People are willing to pay if, uh, if you have a good service, because at the end of the day, right, you know, uh, you must justify what you want to uh, uh, improve. But I will say that please do a regulatory impact assessment. Anything that the government wish to introduce or anybody wish to introduce, be it introduce costs, you want to increase your costs, you want to increase your time on a process or you want to reduce the time on the process, we most welcome it. And also, uh, procedure. We hope that you have less procedure. And if there is any procedure, please make it online. So procedure time costs are very important in the cost of doing business. And I think that we in MNSC together with the Bermuda team, we are always looking at how we can make our cost of doing business and also how we can facilitate our rakyat in doing the business. Today, we are dealing with youngsters who no longer want to fill out forms anymore. All right, click off a button here and there. Information that the government already have, don't ask for it anymore. For example, customer may have already the information. Don't go and ask for next day, please bring the hard copy. All right, World Bank is very particular about this. When you want to go online, online all the way, paperless all the way. So they've been watching uh, our improvement initiative and they pray one day that our new customer will come online. So this is something that we keep it in our pocket, all right? Thank you. Uh, Dr. Zali, uh, is it possible for us to take some questions that have come up? Uh, is there any questions? I, I didn't see any uh, yeah, question coming in from the Q&A. No, it, I think the Q&A was disabled, but we have it on the chat because the PM just announced that uh, from Monday, nearly all sectors will have a conditional opening. Mm -hmm. So uh, the idea here is SOP is adherence. The question is from Shamshul. Afif mm. Abdul Waris. Mm. He mm. says, uh, YAB PM just announced conditional MCO beginning Monday, 4th, May 2020. Nearly all sectors can open conditionally upon SOP adherence. Mm. The question is whether industry sectors are ready with their SOPs, especially sectors that are not allowed to open, that were not allowed to open in the first three phases of the MCO. Mm. Okay, um, any panel want to respond to that? Um, are we ready? Uh, what about those who are not ready? Uh, um, no? Okay, are, uh, are, we, are we ready to open? Yeah, actually, we are ready to open. You know, mm. uh, logistics is the front line for all the, the manufacturer, importer, exporter to start uh, opening up and then to uh, get their cargo uh, into their factory. But as you know, the last uh, two and, uh, one and a half month, or nearly two, uh, one and a half month, uh, a lot of cargo have come in into into the port, and uh, we were able to move some right into our warehouses uh, and also into the warehouses when we have the opening. Uh, but they are not manufacturing, so the raw material that they have now is already uh, fully loaded. You know, their their capacity is really hundred percent, even mm. outside the port, uh, outside mm. outside uh, service port, uh, warehouse provider, which uh, we are doing for them. Okay, so uh, if they are not producing, all right. Where do we want to store the 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 the, the goods? You know, their raw materials, and then you know when they start producing, you know, their their finished product. A lot we can we also found from our 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 customers all you know a lot of uh, order is not cancelled huh, but it's mm. postponed to you know maybe mm. two month three month away. Mm. So this is another effect now uh, that you know all the manufacturer will have you know, of where to store their their raw material and also their finished product. Mm. Uh, we are ready here. For May, mm. the, con the conditional MCO have allowed every uh, economy to open except uh, this uh, 
uh, except for involving crowd places, example, entertainment, uh, cinema, that's the only they don't allow. But mm. there's a lot of social distancing. The new normal is now very different. And now mm. also those who have already uh, got the approval from MITI earlier mm. all have to go for, uh, to be tested. That's another challenge. You know, if all go to go for tested, you know, and what happened if the, the numbers of uh, positive increases, then where do we stand again? That's another issue we are very worried about. Okay. Can I, I think, can I, yeah, sorry. Yes, 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 yes. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah, I think, I think uh, the PM announced this is uh, good news. I hope that uh, companies, uh, big and small, are able to uh, meet the SOP. Uh, but I think that this information, uh, you know, when MCO 1 and 2 were allowed, right, we also have uh, the local council who are not sure about this SOP, all right, not sure about this. And, and also some local council, I don't know, need to quote them, some of them is Lango, are too enthusiastic to overrule uh, what was uh, given by MKN and METI to, uh, for company to operate. And that also affects those essential companies that are producing food mm. and uh, medical supply. And they expect them to work only one shift or whatever, right? Uh, but mm. at that time, those companies were already strict, uh, very, very uh, sticking very strictly to the SOP uh, of 50% mm. and whatever uh, those mm. who are on the list will work and provide proper sanitation, uh, sanitize uh, 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 solutions and all that. But what I think is that this SOP is very, very important for those that are going to come on board. But what is more important is that please uh, uh, communicate, cascade this uh, information quickly to all who are in charge, especially the police or the roadblock and all that, because sometimes they might not understand. For example, uh, during the port release period, I was very pleased that I, I, I was able to be on the road and I was watching the police did get a very good uh, instruction. They did not stop any container, any trucks. They just allowed them on another lane to go straight. All right? They did not check. And, and I mm -hmm. thought that this was, a, this was something that uh, they, they respected the rules. So, mm -hmm. but some, some police, when they come on board, they must. But what I want to address is the, the, the cost now. I know that uh, Captain Subra and some ports, uh, we have also asked to waive demerit charges during this period. Now, let me tell you that from an FMM survey, right? Mm -hmm. uh, there have been no protection for exporters. I'm just talking about exporters. A lot of exporters are not able to meet their obligation because they are not able to export. They are not able to produce, right? And we feel that some of these company uh, penalties will vary between one to five, one percent 1.5% to 20% of the export value and may uh, arrange an uh, amount ranging from 5,000 ringgit to almost 46 million. Uh, that will be uh, penalties. Then the other thing will be additional air freight. Some companies have to, uh, you know, because of their material, they have to fulfill their contract. Now, we don't have a COVID-19 bill yet, or may, may have or may not have. So we will have a lot of contractual issues later on especially uh, shipping document uh, needs to clear goods that are uh, the so some companies instead of shipping it they air freight the item so mm -hmm. some costs can range between 20000 to 2.3 million uh, per per per, uh, per freight mm -hmm. cost okay. so we also look at breach of contract which we do mm -hmm. not know how much and okay. a loss of reputation of Malaysian manufacturer not able to not okay. able to f uh, fulfill future orders so imposition of storage and demorate charges. Now mm. MNSC have written already to ask for the sorry, port Dato, uh, under the port release, but yeah. it, uh, sorry, Dato, it is only restricted to the port release at the moment. Okay. So can it be a, a blanket that okay. they don't need to apply and apply and apply? Dato, Dato. That's all. Dato, uh, Dato Andy, okay. Uh, thank you for thank your you. input. Um, unfortunately, we don't we don't have much yeah. time because our session is limited to only one hour because after. After this, I have I am going to pass over to uh, Captain Subra because he has a special event going on uh, in Port Klang, and uh, he will give a few words before he will take us live to uh, Port Klang. This is going to be very interesting. Not uh, often that we see this. Okay, um, Captain. Uh, you. Thank you, Jay Zali. Uh, thank you for passing the floor back to me. Uh, appreciate it very much. Uh, sorry to interrupt you, uh, Dato Andy. 
Uh, no, but thank you. Can, you know uh, what to do, huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, what we want to uh, showcase here today, being Labor's Labor Day, Workers Day, I think uh, we need to send a few kind words to our our workers, especially the port community, uh, pay some tribute to them. Uh, as you know, the maritime logistics uh, community has uh, tremendously contributed uh, in ensuring the uninterrupted flow of the goods. Uh, especially at times like this where we need essential goods to pass through uninterrupted uh, and they include everyone. I, I, I'm not going to uh, uh, say, I, I can't say uh, or include everyone here, but uh, let, let me just uh, mention a few. Uh, port and logistics workers, transporters, seafarers and many others who are also the frontliners, uh, not only braving the pandemic today, uh, but also working in difficult and very harsh conditions uh, to save, serve our nation and the people. Uh, rest assured, some of them may go unnoticed, but please, please be reminded, please be assured that you are never forgotten. Uh, we, we have you all in our minds and really thank you for your, for your efforts and your uh, sacrifices. So as a gesture of uh, gratitude today, to recognize our unsung frontline heroes within our own industry, especially on Workers' Day today. Uh, the ships in Port Klang, and I believe, I believe also in many other ports around the world, will be sounding their horns and their whistles at 12 noon local time today. So I think we are, got, we, we, we are about three minutes away from, uh, from uh, that event. Uh, so we can tune in, say, in about uh, a minute's time. Uh, Asli, so we still have about a minute or so before I take you live on the Facebook Facebook feed uh, to the terminals of Northport and Westport. So, Captain, okay, we, we have one minute. Yeah, um, that's the time I have before we go live to the port. Now we have two questions uh, from the Q and A. Uh, one is from Pandian, and the other one is from uh, Mr. Uh, Ravindran. Okay, um, basically, um, what? the challenges that we are going to have after MCO, uh, just to summarize. Uh, may, may I miss, think, miss... Uh, doctor, I don't think they can do it in a minute. We'll wait mm. for the launch. After that, we will come back and answer these questions because there is a third one also. That no, I, I, no, I think we, uh, if not, uh, if you, because we have to stop at 12, uh, because that is the time limit uh, for our session, uh, uh, the Zoom session. Um, no, we have to, but we will take all those questions and maybe we will try to get answers uh, and address them uh, directly to the uh, attendees. Yeah, okay. Uh, I we think have... we would like to salute and and, and thanks uh, that uh, Captain Subra for those uh, frontliners, heroes, heroes that are facilitating the trade mm. at this moment. Yeah, mm. thank mm. you. Okay, okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, I'm going to share the share the, uh, the Facebook page now. Okay, please. Don't mind, we've got about a minute or so to go. Mm -hmm. uh, let's let's just uh, put it on and then we can continue speaking. Not a problem. Okay. okay. Uh, and don't worry, we can. Uh, the time can be extended on this. Uh, it can go on for a, above twelve o'clock. It's okay. Uh, sorry, the view is not too clear this morning. I believe it's raining yes, heavily. today, this whole morning. I uh, hope you all can, can uh, see something there.
Okay, Zali. Okay. Back to you. Uh, thank you, Captain Subram. Uh, who would have guessed that by attending this uh, webinar, you will be brought to Port Klang, uh, even though it's uh, virtually, but uh, it's a uh, no, uh, very interesting event that we are very proud to be a part of. And I think uh, we, 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 we don't have uh, much time left. Um, no, we have questions. We will collect all those questions. Um, we promise that, uh, you know, at the, uh, you know, as a society, we will continue to have all these events uh, in the future. We're going to have more webinars. Uh, I'm sure uh, we are going to want to learn what will ha what has happened after the 4th of May um, when we reopen and what has the the uh, the, the industries uh, you know, uh, changed? How how it has changed? Okay. With that, I would like to um, you know, say. Uh, on behalf of uh, CLT Malaysia uh, and CLLB as uh, uh, the, the host for this webinar. Huge thanks, uh, you know, our deepest appreciation um, to the panelists, uh, Captain Subramaniam, uh, Mr. Avinchua and, and, and Dr. Andy. Uh, we appreciate your time. Uh, we have learned a lot and we are more enlightened now than before of what has happened uh, in the uh, industry and we Hope that we're going to see a better, uh, brighter uh, uh, situation uh, in the future with all these changes happening uh, in our industries as put forth by the panelists. Thank you very much. Um, I hope to see you again uh, on behalf of CLT Malaysia and CLB. Thank you to all attendees who have joined us. Hope to see you again. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Thank, Thank you very much. Uh, for inviting. Thank you. Happy holiday. Happy holiday. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you, you for the experience, much. Captain Subra. Thank you right. for the experience. Thank you. Yeah, it was amazing. Yes, yes. It brought tears to my eyes. Okay. <laughs> it was very good. Thank you so much, all of you. Okay. I think it was a good session. Thank yeah. you. Okay. All right. Uh, Selfie mission. End session. Can, uh, no? And